When most people think of a long-haul flight, they envision sitting in a seat for 8 to 10, even 15 hours to get from one side of the globe to the other. Nearly every one of our operations are long-haul by this standard. When we say one of our ops is a long haul, we're talking about ops that take days. And not just days of flying with nights and rest, but plural, days sometimes, between any meaningful time on the ground. On this particular operation, our mission was to move an Airbus A320 out of storage in Alice Springs, Australia, and deliver it to a maintenance facility in the south of France, so that it could be made ready for entry back into passenger service with a new airline. Start to finish, we were on the road just under six days to accomplish this mission, and the complexity of even getting to Australia during COVID times was so great, we needed to fly eastbound from the United States to get to Brisbane, then charter a light turboprop to overcome interstate travel restrictions between Queensland and the Northern Territories. 50 hours after leaving home, we'd finally fly our first approach, a visual in the Jakarta, Indonesia, following a four hour and 33 minute leg from Alice Springs out across the Timor Sea and eastern limits of the Indian Ocean. Jakarta was just a fuel stop, and the intention was to fuel up fast and be airborne for Colombo, Sri Lanka within an hour. This trip took place in early November 2021, and the world was still pretty locked down from the Delta variant, which didn't make this an easy trip. A standard ferry flight fuel stop turn is an hour. The fastest we can realistically do it is 45 minutes with a narrow body, but at a place like Jakarta with busy ramps and long taxi routes, we're lucky to be out in 90. Our job is simple. One of us does the outside work and one of us stays inside. The outside work includes the walk around, dealing with the fueler, signing the handling receipts and uplift tickets, loading catering, offloading trash, and coordinating with the ground crew. The inside guy stays in the cockpit and loads the box. This entails inputting the route, takeoff and performance data, and loading the planned winds, and then getting the clearance from ATC. I got you now. In total, this process normally takes 20 minutes tops, but often on the long haul ferry flights, large expanses of the database are simply not preloaded into the MCDU for areas outside of where the airplane has been operating. Think of it like your car GPS without any street names. At the airlines, this would be a no go item. In the ferry world, it's just another day, so we load each point by hand using latitude and longitude information from the flight plan and from our up-to-date nav pubs on the iPad. On planes like that, both guys work on the box with one reading and one typing to get it done quickly and accurately. Push back and start approved and uh, we'll face November Charlie 7, Nomadic 516. Checklist, uh, cockpit prep complete. Yep. Your pens and covers removed. Signs on. Meteors. Align lights off. Fuel quantity. Said and done, we got out of Jakarta in an hour and a half and finally got a hold of some catering. We hadn't eaten anything substantive to that point as the flight in Alice Springs was only catered with a box of Tim Tams and some beverages. The route to Colombo blocked in at 4 hours and 13 minutes across the Indian Ocean. Waiting for us in Colombo, another quick turn. Ready, fly, fly, fix, and we zero 07 left, wait for takeoff. Seven, 
Are you retuning? Yeah, because I just changed the frequency. Check Carter Radio, it's Carter Radio. Oscar Mike Delta 516 on 11311. The one thing we can always count on is unintelligible speech over HF while out flying over the Indian Ocean. The worst of it is normally while trying to communicate with Mumbai off the coast of India, but Jakarta control on HF sometimes gives India a run for their money. Heading westbound at 38,000 feet and 500 miles per hour, we flew the last two hours under an extended sunset. By the time we descended over the heavily forested island, the sun was just about gone over the horizon. Originally, we planned to overnight here in Sri Lanka, but once again, COVID policies objected to the plan. This time, the problem was downrange. If we officially entered Sri Lanka, we'd have needed fresh PCR tests for the next two fuel stops. Instead, we opted to push forward. The next leg up to Oman would be flown entirely under darkness, and that transition to night flying after a very long day can really make you feel like crap. Knowing that was in our future, I called in a request to our handlers for a fresh thermos of coffee, which was, at this point, mission critical. Refueling on the A320 is even easier than on the 737. The system is almost completely automated. The fueling panel is located within reach on the side of the fuselage behind a flimsy little door, and all you need to do is turn on a switch and move the rocker until the total fuel quantity you desire is displayed. Then, the fueler starts pumping and fuel is properly distributed to the tanks. Once the desired quantity is uplifted, it automatically closes the refueling valves, and that's it. Colombo was a true 45 minute turn. To get our takeoff fuel load of 15 tons, we uplifted about 3,500 gallons of Jet A. The brake is set, you're clear to disconnect the tow bar and let me know when I can turn one. All right. We got our coffee and we were mentally ready for the next three hours and 48 minutes of night flying before finally climbing into some beds. Coffee wasn't the only thing we got in Colombo. The handlers, Care Aviation, who we've been using for years, were kind enough to bring us both bags of local Ceylon tea and cinnamon. It was a tight fit, but we got it all into our bags. For some reason, the airplane decided to start giving us a little trouble in Colombo. The culprit, one of the flight control computers called the SEC, which stands for Spoiler and Elevator Computer. Spoiler and 
Let's reset it out in a second. The Airbus is fly-by-wire, and the flight controls are powered by multiple redundant computers. There are three SECs, two ELACs, and two FACs. Having seven interconnected computers allows us to still operate with redundancy if one or two computers go offline. Okay, well, spoilers one and two are in op. We've got a bunch of in op shit, man. We spent a few minutes troubleshooting with maintenance on the phone. Ultimately, thank goodness, the fault cleared by simply resetting the circuit breakers. Somewhat par for the course on an airplane that's flying for the first time in months after reactivation from storage. We wouldn't have any more trouble with the flight control computers for the rest of the trip. Leg to Muscat was uneventful and boring. There was some weather out in the Arabian Sea toward the center of our route, but we were largely above it and only needed to make small deviations. We were tired, and the darkness certainly wasn't helping. This was a long duty day. How long? Well, by the time we would crawl into bed in Muscat, it had been 19 hours since we left Brisbane Archer Field in the King Air. And that was after a mere four hours in Brisbane following 29 hours in Emirates First Class. This was the first time ever in Muscat for both Ava and I. We normally use Abu Dhabi's Al Batin for the overnight tech stop in this region, and we were looking forward to seeing a new place. Although, we wouldn't really leave the airport property. There was a hotel in the terminal, and this would have to do. Not a bad little uh, ramp car. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pretty nice, right? Yeah, it's awesome. To be honest, I don't remember too much about the night we arrived. We were both zombies as we made our way to our rooms to climb right into bed. I do remember deciding to wait until morning for a shower, and that the second my head hit the pillow, it felt like this. Boom. The alarm went off, it was eight hours later, and time to head to the lobby for breakfast. How's your breakfast, Steve? Good, yeah? Yeah, I love that. I ate it all. I got our COVID test printed off. I'm ready, by the way. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Full belly, off to France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get some more pizza in Cairo. Yeah, excellent. It's a shame we didn't really eat that pizza in Colombo because it was, it was good. good, but we were stuffed. I know, like, I don't even know what we were stuffed with. It wasn't even stuffed, it was just Sick of being on airplanes for three days. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. I saw the flight plans. They're like, it's only four hours to Cairo, which isn't bad from here. Oh, yeah. Just, just, you can go this way. And then, I don't know. Thank I, you very much. Thank you. Do we have to wait for our dude to take us? Yeah, probably. Hi, sir. Good morning. Hi. Oh, you're the Jetix. Perfect. Yeah, okay, only two? Just yeah, us. just us two, yeah. Okay, let's go. Perfect. okay, perfect. Oman is a beautiful country. To the north, the blue-green shallows of the Gulf of Oman, to the east, the Arabian Sea, and a varied landscape of huge mountains and vast deserts within. This is a place that I really want to visit and explore someday, and eventually I will. The ground handlers came through for us big with our last-minute decision to overnight in Muscat, and based on that experience, I'll be sure we use Oman again as an overnight stop. Next time, in the city, with some time to roam around. We arrived at the jet and boarded once again from the L3 door, located in the back of the airplane. This is because the normal L1 door was deferred as emergency use only.
They're the worst. I walked back here a few times yesterday. They're so cheap. The brace position stickers are glow in the dark. I know. There's a pizza in our cinnamon. All right, brakes are released. You're cleared to push and tail west on Lima. West on Lima. The brakes are released. The overnight rest was short, but just what we needed. Eight hours of hard REM sleep lifted us both back up to 100%, and on the taxi out of Muscat, we felt like we were starting a whole new trip. Today would also be a long one involving three legs. The haul across the Saudi desert over to Cairo, then a trip across the Mediterranean Sea to Tarbes, France, where we'd clear customs, and then a short hop over to Francazol, just on the other side of town from Toulouse. Here we go. Cool. I feel so much better than I did starting out yesterday. Fuck yeah, dude. A million times better. <laughs> What's up with that Almog there? It's like coming back. Yeah, that's part of the airway. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Alright. Azul 71, uh, stand 203. Set for farm. Ready for the truck. Rush set. If I'm ready for pushing south, let's go 71. Azul 71, push back and set up through the on uniform echo freezing off. Push back on uniform echo facing off as one uh, 71. The first hour out of Oman heading west passes through some busy airspace. We overfly the UAE passing right over Abu Dhabi and then over the Persian Gulf touching the edges of Qatar and Bahrain. Then several hours over the vast desert of Saudi Arabia. Visibility was fantastic and we were keen to get some good footage. Up. Speed check, left side. Out cap. I've probably traversed the northern half of Saudi Arabia, both east and westbound, at least two dozen times in my career. And each time, I'm reminded just how vast and desolate it really is. Our flight path between the UAE and Cairo passes just a few miles south of the Iraqi border. It takes hours across the country, which is bordered on the west by the Red Sea and to the east by the Persian Gulf. Everything in between is just vast expanses of wind-blown sand, some rocky formations, and the occasional tiny patch of civilization, which I have to assume is populated by folks that rarely, if ever, venture outside of the town's borders. Where would they even go? This is a very remote part of the world.
The first sign that we're getting close to descent is passing the Gulf of Aqaba and then the Red Sea. The Suez Canal can be seen on the northern edge of the Red Sea. Last year, when the Suez was blocked by a container ship, Ava and I were flying an A320 to Pakistan and got the chance to witness all the ships waiting for the canal to be cleared from 40,000 feet. Yeah, the Suez. Yeah. It's crazy. One one ship is long enough to block that whole thing. I know. Look at that. Cairo's terminal area is always very busy handling dozens of aircraft at a time. Even on a clear day like this one, the airspace is full of aircraft receiving arrival and departure radar vectors and it's hard to get a word in edgewise. This is one of the clearest days I've seen in a long time going into Cairo and the camera was rolling. We were even able to see the pyramids. This episode will play out with the entire visual approach sequence into Cairo with minimal time lapse. We've got the left five for the left heading the three two zero. Let's go to Mega Delta 5.6, tilt over to the right, heading 310, 2700 feet. All right, right turn, heading 270, and city out, city Heading 320 to the right, 2700 feet. 0 Oscar Mike Delta 516 right heading 015 clear balance 5 right to board stop. 015 uh, cleared ILS 5 right when report established nomadic 516. Oscar Magdata 516, speed 180. Speed 180, uh, nomadic 5 Saudi 301, turn right heading 305, speed 220. Speed 220, right heading 305, Saudi 301. Is it there 263, container descent 4500 feet, can it's 1016. 4500, can it's 1016, there 263. Is it there 265, descent of flight level 090? Flaps 1, speed checks. Is it there 263, turn left heading 240? Left heading to four zero two six three. Reaching Cairo, the trip would be about 80% complete. We'd spend an hour and a half on the ground fueling and taking catering before the next long leg to Tarbes and then the short hop over to Francazol. But you'll have to wait till episode three for that. Five. Nomadic 516 established, localizer 5 right. Skarmac Delta 516, clear ILS 5 right, tower 18-1, good day. All right, clear ILS 5 right over to tower today. Cairo Tower, Nomadic 516, ILS 5 right. Got it. All right, so star. You're down, plus three. <laughs> Commander 5, uh, one six, can cover either contact on way zero five right, continue approach, uh, minimum approach. Oscar Mike, Delta 516, secure tower, radar contact, continue approach, five center, reduce speed, one six. Uh, we're five right, nomadic 516, and we're reducing speed now. Correct myself, uh, continue approach, five right. Alright, we'll continue approach 5 right, nomadic 516. Jeter 771, director 119, decimal 05, ma'am. Thank you, 05, salam alaikum. Alaikum, salam alaikum. Jeter, salam alaikum, Jeter 044. 
Gear. Got down green. Down green. Flaps are full. Uh, auto thrust speed and. Oscar Mike Delta armed. Five One uh, Six uh, One Zero Four Zero One Seven Knots. Clear to land zero five right. Clear to land zero five right. Uh, Nomadic Five One Six. Spoilers. Reverse screen. Qatar 1303, Cairo. 